What up, everybody? Welcome to the Crocs and Our Pockets podca- pod- podcast, episode 179. Uh, so I completely forgot to hit start recording in Riverside FM when we did this podcast. So there was like 15 minutes of the podcast that you're not going to hear. You're going to have to go and look at it on Twitch or YouTube in order to get that full experience. But for now, you're just going to get this intro. So if it if it feels like you're just getting right into the podcast and it's starting abruptly, that's because I'm an idiot. And uh, this is what you pay for. You know, this is why you're subscribed. But uh, yeah. shout out to my editor, Dan, endlessly. You're the fucking man. Uh, and uh, you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful night. Enjoy the podcast. I love you. Goodbye. Yeah, we're in, it's 179. We're starting it right here. Fuck all you guys. If you missed it in the live show, that's your fault. You should have been around. <laughs> yeah. Should have been here. Missed out. <laughs> Damn, sorry, Gray. Um, <laughs> no, you're fine. But yeah, God of War. Fantastic. So were you oh playing it on the God. PS4, I'm no. assuming? Play uh, PC. Yeah, I, got, it just came out for PC. Yeah, that's why. I got that badass new PC. Yeah, yeah. And I've been playing Elden Ring, too. And I've been using... So, like, I, I like to challenge myself for some dumb reason. The masochist in me is like, yeah, let's make it real bad. So I've been playing games that are, like, meant for controller with keyboard and mouse the entire time. Like, I did oh, all wow. of God of War and Elden Ring with keyboard and mouse. Oh you sound God. like my son. <laughs> But it's son, so fun. He doesn't want to use controller for anything if he can use his keyboard and mouse. Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like I started with guys, con- controllers. Everything. He has to use. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why. I just live it, and it's still a lot of fun. So yeah, I've been doing that lately. Did you? Did you already beat God of War? Oh yeah, I one hundred percented that bitch. You did all oh, wow. the everything, uh, all you of did it, all the Valkyries. All uh, of it. <laughs> yup. On mouse and keyboard? Yup. Oh. It's, it's, it That's feels pretty gnarly. Pretty, uh, like I achieved something there. That's pretty I was, big. Yeah, I was like very particular too. I was like, I do not want to finish the story until I know that I've completed all of the areas 100%. And you all the Valkyries, everything. Normal or hard? Yeah, normal. normal. Normal story. Like a story normal. blend. Kind of a thing. They do such an amazing job with that game. Holy crap! Oh my god, that I I played it on release a couple years ago when it first came out on PS4, and I rem- it was my game of the year. Like what, 2018? Yeah. Yeah, it was my game of the year that year. It was a really good game. Yeah, it so. was really good. Jimmy, your mic keeps getting quieter. What? <laughs> it's because what are you I was doing? I was I was bad mic discipline. No, it's like it's it's even with you closer, it's still quieter now. Go to go to your your output gain on your compressor and your Go XLR. Just boost that by like okay. seven decibels. Hang on, mm-hmm. crank it for me, Daddy. <laughs> Hang on, pal. <laughs> <laughs> We've only been doing this how long? Uh, okay, I'll crank it up. How's that? Okay. They, hey, he's awake. Perfect. Better? Better. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jimmy, what games have you been getting into? So, Subnautica, which I've been playing kind of off and on for, um, I don't know, last couple weeks. Uh, I've. It's a fun game to stream because there's so many people in the Subnautica community, and you... And, a lot of them are really helpful too. Like, there's a lot of people who like to watch that game to see people discover things for the first time. First playthroughs of Subnautica are pretty popular on Twitch, mm-hmm. but a lot of new people show up that are just being cool. You know, part of they like Subnautica, you know, playthroughs. So, um, it's been fun. A uh, bunch of retro too. Uh, I beat I beat a game recently, and I can't remember what it was. I beat something. <laughs> I beat. I beat. I don't even know uh, what retro game you've been playing recently. I I've, I've been playing a, a whole medley of different games. Um, but yeah, man, just a bunch of different stuff. I I haven't um. I don't know if there's really anything that's on my radar for the this summer that I can really think of. Um, but that's okay because I've got such a massive backlog of shit to play that, you know, it's on whatever. So but yeah, that's about it for me. I, I know that you said that you are uh, unemployed now. Um, are you going to miss having those summers off, or are you more so looking for 
a, a more consistent work schedule? For me, it's going to be a more consistent work and life balance. Um, why is everyone laughing in me in chat? What happened? Uh, <laughs> Van said you probably beat your dick because that's retro because you're so old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what the hell? Like, I thought my mic was cutting out again or something. I don't know. No. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to divert really quick. I don't know if you saw this in the, the Discord that we share, but um, there was a joke about... Uh, I, I was talking on stream the other day about how I have a certain perspective about seeing people. Are you okay, Gray? My dog farted. It's real bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's this perspective that I have that's not a great sounding perspective, but Jimmy, I will most likely, even though we hang out every week and I talk to you all the time, I will most likely only see you in person maybe 25 more times before one of us dies. And that is the reality for all of my online friends is that I will most likely only see them once a year or once every couple of years for the rest of my life. And just like comparing, I know it's super sad, comparing like in-person relations, relationships to online relationships and how there's pros and cons of both and why like going to see people at TwitchCon or going to do meetups are like so fucking important to me because like I, I have to keep seeing them because I know how important it is. And again, one of my big reasons, like one of them, one of the main reasons why I as like a mini entrepreneur crave some supplemental income is for that travel is to go around to continue seeing people to continue to build relationships because like relationships can only go so far in my opinion online there's like that last five percent of a relationship with another human being that can't exist if it's strictly through cameras and microphones and, and, and stuff like that um so vans made a joke <laughs> in the discord they're like hey you know since you're only going to see me 30 more times knackers and he said something like oh well, you know except for jimmy <laughs> we probably got 20 it was another old joke but it was funny at the time yeah. and i didn't know if you had seen it and didn't know what I the fuck we were talking about i saw it i might have reacted to it <laughs> then I think the response to that was like, "Wow, that's depressing." Or something. Yeah, know? It, it's super yeah. fucking depressing. Um, but it it keeps things thing. keeps things in in perspective, and it you know it makes you think like, "Hey, when you know somebody asks, hey, do you want to meet up and get a beer?" It's been a super long time, and you know it's been like a year or two, and it makes you think like, "Well, this could be one of the last times I see this person, so it might be a good idea to just meet up and get that beer." Or that could be you know leading you in a different direction. Be like, you know, what? no fuck, I don't really care. I just want to. Drink my beer at home. <laughs> Do you have any other uh, existential dread thoughts you'd like to share yeah. with us since we're keeping it keeping it real? No. Okay. How, however, to, to counteract that, though, <clears throat> you know how you think, like, 30 is old or, or 40 is old, right? Uh, or, like, the youngins consider us old. Yeah, I know. Gray's like, what the fuck is he talking about? When you think years. about... Like, like you think 30 is old because of the age or because of the number. But then when you look back, the first 15 years of your life are fucking pointless. Like you, you weren't living those first 15 years when you're 30 and you're looking. Yes, that math is right. When you're 30 and you're looking towards 60, you have 30 years as living as an adult like, you have 30 years of having complete control of your family and your friends and your finances and all your decisions. So, like, the next 30 are going to be baller, you know, compared to the first 30. So, if you, if you look at it, like, that way. But also, you're going to see your friends 30 times before you die. That's it. Online friends. Five. I know. <laughs> Fucking sad, right? <laughs> Dude, what is up with you in this thing today? Holy shit. Holy well, I'll, t I'll tell you where it stemmed from. There was, uh, I was watching a podcast with a guy and he was, you know, he was talking about like going to see your folks. And if you move out of town or you move out of state, like how often you see them. And then he was like, he was talking to this guy who was hosting a podcast. He's like, how often do you see your folks? And he's like, oh, you know, I, I see them when we travel them once a year. And he's like, okay, well, so you probably think that you have 30 more years of, of seeing your folks. And then he's like, yeah, yeah, about that. And then he's like, well, what you really have is you have 30 more times of seeing them because you're only seeing them once a year. And he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I try to keep things in perspective for myself. It's super depressing, but mm -hmm. 
Not everything I mean, in life what, is all If PG. that's what motivates you to go be social, then I guess Gang that bangs. works. There you go. Yep. That's how you get you me know. to him. Okay. I'll be like, Anyways, hey, man, what games I'm going to die today? before you probably. Hey, man. <laughs> Maybe. Come on. I, I love Boof and Topo over. Chico's. I'm going to die before you probably. <laughs> Any dude, any time that you want to come and spawn, be like, dude, I'm dying, you're dying, let's hang out. Be like, all right, dude, you got ah, me. <laughs> we're all dying. God. Click anyway, welcome to Crocs and Hot Pockets. Where we told you at the start of the show that we were going to keep it light tonight. We lied. Yes. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> Dive straight into all the dark. It's good. Oh shit. Um. All right. Twitch stuff. What you got for us, dude? No Is games. You were telling us what games you were playing. You all done? Oh, I did. I'm done. Just some, you know, some retro shit, some Nautica. Yeah, that's it. Knackers, what have you been playing? Yeah. I, I've been a uh, kind of a, a pussy. However, I've been playing, um, I played Warzone Resurgence for the first time ever. So for anybody who enjoys Call of Duty, but doesn't like Warzone, to me, this is kind of like the best of both worlds. It's a, it's a BR where it's really small. So they're 40 person lobbies. The map is super tiny, and when you die, you automatically respawn on a timer. So as soon as you die, you can come back in 30 to 45 seconds and then continue fighting. It isn't until your team gets wiped that you're removed, or once you get to the end game, uh, there is like there's a certain amount of time where you can't respawn again after that fact. Um, so super fast paced, much less downtime. Uh, it's still Warzone, so like if you just don't enjoy battle royales at all, you're probably not gonna like it. Um, but it was really, really good. I played with um, Robot and Glitter uh, like last Thursday. We played for like four hours, got six wins. I'm like, oh my god, is this what it's like to win BRs? And then, uh, and then we played last night with Vans and Gippy, and we we didn't win a single time, and it was actually a pretty salty experience. Um, That's because but, Vans is not very good at video games unless he's talking nah. about Smash. He's yeah, good at Smash, Smash is pretty <laughs> totally much, different he's, story. He's pretty much trash at every other video game. I said that. <laughs> Um, so I've been playing that, and then Dying Light 2, that's kind of Weenie Nye's, our uh, campaign co-op right now. Uh, not a great game, but we want kind of want to see it through. Uh, and then Roblox. I'm still playing Roblox every now and then because I fucking love that game. Um, but yeah, that's it for, for video games on my end. I think. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, Twitch news. So uh, we haven't had a Crocs and Hot Pockets podcast probably about a month or so um, because of canceling on my end. So there's been a lot that has gone down as far as Twitch news. So some of this stuff is probably not anything new. Um, but I realize, I, I guess when I have the show, I realize that a lot of people who watch Twitch don't necessarily keep up with Twitch news. You know, like I keep up with Twitch news because I'm a Twitch streamer. But people who aren't streamers and they're they're just audience members, maybe they're not. Um, maybe they're they're not paying attention. So a lot of really cool stuff lately. Um, before we get into the Twitch news, um, how I want to get like a, a pulse check on how you guys are feeling about Twitch right now because there is me there's a lot of growth coming from other platforms. There are, you know, these rumors of the, the splits of sub revenues going to be changing. Again, just rumors. Um, there are changes to YouTube live streaming that are that are happening. Um, so if you, I kind of want to just get like your general feelings of uh, how, what are your feelings towards Twitch right now as a platform? Are, are you feeling better than normal? Are you feeling worse than normal? Gray, don't answer this if you're about to apply for Twitch partner. <laughs> it's wonderful. I love so Gray, it. I'll I'll uh, I'll let you go first. <laughs> someone who tends to not pay attention as much as I probably should I kind of just like log in stream and log out like I kind of just do it and do it as like I feel like it kind of thing and I, I try not to pay too much attention to everything um so my feelings are kind of very like indifferent there's some stuff that I'm like I really love the artist badge stuff that they released and some of like the little details and pieces that they're changing um, but I don't know. I, I'm probably like the worst person to ask this question, honestly. Like, I just, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of not really trying. But honestly, that's probably a good way to look at it to a certain extent. Like, it, it, if you're at least cognizant of 
a lot of the a lot of the big stuff that's happening. Maybe not really tolerating all of the the shitty shit that goes on, um, or so like some of the smaller stuff. Um, it's it's probably not a probably not a bad perspective to have. Yeah, like drama and stuff. I don't care. I'm I feel like an old lady. I'm just like I don't have time for you kids. Like I'm done. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just gonna go play my games and drink my drink and have a good time. Did you say that you were turning thirty this year? Yes. Oh my God! It's the Senior Citizen Podcast. Jesus Christ! What is happening? <laughs> it's kind of nutty. Uh, Gray, did you change anything on your mic? Because now your mic is quiet. No. Oh, maybe. Maybe did I do that? No. Gee, oh my God! Yes, you did. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! I was so just about there. to say something, and then I was I'm like, sorry. I might I have done up? a thing. Nope, that's no. my fault. That was me. Is this better? Is this mm. good? Perfect, perfect. Thank you. I didn't want to point my finger because I was like, well, yeah. It's all right. You guys are just keeping me on my toes. It's it's all yeah, good. I appreciate yeah. it. Making sure you're paying right. attention and oh. doing things. It, as far as I'm concerned, um, I think the way I feel about Twitch right now is a lot of the, the word of, of some of these changes that are allegedly going to take place. Until they actually do, mm. I mean, it's just hearsay, you know? Yep. So yep. I try not to put too much stock about things that are outside of my control. Uh, most of the publicity they've gotten from a lot of it has been bad, which I'm mm. sure that they're aware of. Um, so, you know, I try to focus just on what I can, um, which is just myself, you know, and trying to be a better content creator. Um they have been offering things right now. It's just for partners, but like I'm going to my, this will be my third like online webinar uh, that Twitch is actually fourth one that they've offered. It's basically like professional development for streamers. Hmm. And this next one I'm going to, um, it's NDA stuff, but I haven't been yet, but I can at least tell you what it is. It's, it's called uh, crafting your elevator pitch. And it's a one and a half hour webinar for you to help streamers that are looking for, um, you know, which I am to, to find some sponsors that make sense and how to get your foot in the door with your pitch and whatnot. And so it's cool. I mean, they, they are making strides in supporting in that particular case. I think that, but you only get to see that if you're a partner, you know, right. The average, um, which makes sense. Cause it's not like they can do that for the entire platform, you know, and even with, for, it's not even guarantee if you're a partner, you have to, you get the email and you got to sign up for a slot, like immediately if you want to get it, you know? Yeah. So, because they're pretty, they go pretty fast. Uh, but I do think that they are trying. Um, but you know that the court of public opinion is the one that generally matters most when it comes to stuff on Twitch. And I think the general, I think the general feeling seems to be right now that Twitch has kind of been fucking up lately, and mm. maybe being, maybe being lazy with their, you know, being seen as the number one place, but. YouTube keeps making all these gains, yeah. you know, and big gains, and who, who knows what's going to happen. So that's my take. Is there any one feature that you are currently missing from Twitch right now? Not necessarily something that has popped up on a different platform and that you're jealous, but is there something that you are constantly going back to being like, man, I wish I could do this with live streaming or do this with Twitch? I wish there was a more intuitive way to bring in like your buddies. Um, like I even like I tried doing that teams thing once on Twitch. But I think it only works if you're if everyone that's in it is a partner or something or I don't know. I wasn't able yeah, to get it sure. going. Huh? It's either that sure or that only partners can. Yeah. Only partners no, can I host. Initiated, I hosted. Yeah. And I inv and but I couldn't invite like it just wasn't working. So I don't know. Maybe it was still early. It was it was months ago when I did this. Mm -hmm. But uh, and, but even then, it's not very intuitive. You know, it's just not a really intuitive system. It'd be cool if they had a way to um, just make that whole process a little bit more seamless, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that'd be cool. Uh, but other than that, I don't generally play a lot with other people on Twitch, so it's not like it's a huge feature. I just wish it was easier to do. That's all. 
I think I might do it more if it was easier to do instead of having to set kind of set things up ahead of time, you know? Mm -hmm. That's all. I am, to that point, I am excited to see, you know, when, when we're talking about advancements in video games, right? We, we think about, like, graphics. Like, oh, we just want graphics to be better. We want the game to be prettier. We want it to run better. Uh, however, I also would like to see like an insane advancement with AI in video games, right? Like to see com like enemies and, and allies and how they act and how they interact with your game. Like I, what's the advancement in that? Like when you're, when you're following somebody in a video game and like the way that they're able to interact with the environment around you and how they can change the course of a quest, there's probably so much room for that to grow too. And I think things could get, really really fucking interesting when yeah. it comes to streaming and you know i just think about like bishop the reason bishop's not on the show tonight is because he's in barcelona with twitch doing twitch rivals shit right yeah, now doing big dick shit yeah. and i think about what twitch rivals can bring to the platform outside of just throwing a show and then live streaming it like what where can we go as far as a bunch of live streamers streaming on their own channels, but also interacting with a main channel that's throwing on a game show. How can you get those streamers' communities to also be interactive with that game show? Um, I think that's the advancements that I'm really looking for in live streaming. Like, the core of live streaming has not changed. Mm -hmm. Webcam, microphone, your live streaming content, that's it. Um, what if you had a one versus 100 type show with your Twitch chat and it had, like, a host on another channel that you could all watch from, and yeah. your Twitch chat was the one that were the, like answering the questions via like an online interface or whatever, right? So, so it would be you could you could override them maybe, or you could, they could do all kinds of shit. That could be a really cool game show idea if they. Ooh, but yeah. that's like what you're talking about, right? To make it easy to jump in. Like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire, but the chat has to vote for the answer by majority? Yeah. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. <laughs> but what's funny is half of the half the participants would probably be fucking out like right out the gate because chat would just want to <laughs> troll them. Oh, but yeah. if you get a reward system like if your community wins, you get yeah, a Twitch like, Rivals emote or yeah, something or, something or like a crown. That. Yeah. I, I think there I think there would be more people trying to actually do and answer it right than there would be trolls. Mm. I would think so. Yeah. I would hope so. I, I would guess also it depends hope on the so. channel. <laughs> right. <laughs> so like it's almost like having a smaller a smaller community with a bunch of brainiacs. Like that's that's how you mm. win. Is you have the, mm -hmm. you have less trolls but people who know the answers. Um yeah, I think that would be I think that would be really cool. Um yeah, mm -hmm. it would be. Great. How about you? As far as things that you're not necessarily like negative, but is there something that you are are missing in live streaming right now? Or again, something you wish that you had, maybe a feature, something from a different platform? Um, or like, is there something else with audience engagement that you're chasing? Um, I would say <laughs> stability. I feel like I've had a lot of issues with the servers lately. Like, it's just constant buffering, and it's not on my end. It's on a Twitch server end. Um, but, I mean, realistic. Like, I know also, like, as an affiliate and partnerships, there's it's different tiers of what kind of uh, resolutions you get, quality options, everything like that. So that just varies. But, um, no, honestly, the things that you're saying are really, really cool. Like, to be able to have a seamless way to include other streamers instead of it just being something that's just, like, you. Because it's, like, yep. sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we would just yeah. want to hang out with our friends and make it a seamless thing and it not feel like work to hang out with your friends and play games and share their stuff, too. So, honestly, like, what you guys said. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing. Like, I, honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that I've done this so many times with Knackers and you and others, like, I would never have raided into a podcast and just go, you know, willy nilly. Because, but it's because I, you generally know, hey, these are the tech things we may encounter. How we generally know how to solve. Mm -hmm. You know, Knackers are like, oh, your gain's bad. Okay, I'll put my output gain up. Whatever, <laughs> because. It's going to output differently to this application than it does through me on OBS. So what yeah. was fine that I was just using on OBS is not quite the same for this application, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. 
Uh, it would be really cool if Twitch could find a way to standardize and make that easier to to hop in. And then a better system than they have even now. Uh, it, it just, I don't know. I think, I'm sure they're working on shit, but mm -hmm. will it get implemented? Who knows? Um... Oh man, you just brought up a, a great point. Oh, um, was it fucking Fall Guys that dropped a new update? And I'm like, oh shit, okay. They're finally catching on a video game that can get Twitch chat involved in the video game. And then they were like, oh cool, now your chat can, can just control things on the stream. I'm like, motherfuckers, make it so I can play Fall Guys with 50 people from my chat. I don't want them controlling the game. I want to play with them. It is. It still blows my fucking mind that it's 2022 and like nobody, no game developers have found out a way to, to create temporary lobbies so that their communities can play video games with the streamers. Marbles is like just scratch the surface on it, right? To just like get people involved, but there's gotta be a better way so that streamers can play games with their communities outside of adding them on friends lists or like creating, like having to have a separate account that they can add their community on so that we're not infringing, infringing on the, the privacy of the streamer. Why has nobody caught on to this yet? It, it drives me fucking insane. I, there's gotta be a technical, uh, uh, restriction to it but somebody somebody's smart enough right we have fucking nasa on this planet and we can't figure this shit out mm. yeah by the way it looks like your bot's gonna need to re uh need a new token because <laughs> the ap it happened to me earlier the api was all fucked up what i had to close my my i tried uh doing you know shout out you were got raided while this was all going on i Oh, are you paying attention to the chat while we're on a podcast? You were talking. You got mm. a raid. I had to mm. shout. I'm a gotcha. mod here. <laughs> Not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> oh, wait. I can't unmod you to the bot. Fix your bot. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Anyway. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Jimmy. Okay. That's all. That's all Anything saying. else? Mm -mm. And your no, fucking insubordination? <laughs> churlish. And churlish. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, I, I would just I would really really love to see some some game developer get into something where the streamers can play games with their community, where it doesn't involve adding to friends lists and stuff like that. Have you seen Goose Goose Duck? Where it's kind I've of heard it's of it. kind of like Among Us, but it's people that stream. I'm pretty sure then they created this game that's very similar to Among Us, but you can just join in a lobby. Kind of a thing. Okay. Which is nice. But it's not, I don't know if it's like as. M max Chat amount of players? Uh, I want to say 16. Okay, they're going to say yeah, 6. 16, I was about to lose my 16, shit. 16, 16, 16. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, fun. And because you know, that's kind of my other frustration with, um, with video games right now, too, is. A lot of video games multiplayer is like max of four people, four, yeah. four player lobbies, four player player lists, mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of it kind of sucks to not be able to have uh, other video games that support more people because like the the massive multiplayer games have kind of fallen off a little bit. Like it's all about like battle royales right now, and and then of course like we got our single players like Elden Ring and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but hey, it's a, it's a it's a little bit different. Um, so, okay. Well, thank you all for answering that question. Um, you know, I, I feel like I don't really have a leg to stand on right now with Twitch because it's sometimes the platform that I spend the least amount of time on um, compared to, you know, compared to TikTok and Twitter. Um, you know, I still love it here. I still plan on, on staying here, um, but I would love to see some some more advancements in and how Twitch is doing live streaming because uh, I do feel like if I was to make a guess and if you guys were to guess as well, who do you think is going to be on top? with live streaming in five years. Do you think it's going to be a Twitch or do you think it's going to be YouTube? <sighs> Your guess is as good as know. mine, dude. I'm not very good at prognosticating. And yeah. I, I, I don't think that I'm going to make a prostate? prediction. I said prognosticating. You sack of shit! <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, Gray, how about you? I don't know. I just, I, I think I just got like a little... Mm, I'm over YouTube kind of feeling because I've just mm. was on it for so long and I'm over it and 
and whatnot. And whenever I did start streaming, I would stream on both YouTube and Twitch. And the difference Wait, how come is... none of y'all said Trovo? What? What? That's why. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's why. Wait. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just liked how, like, YouTube just feels... Mm, Impersonal? Uh, very. Very. And yeah. Pro like, you're going to get... I feel like the community of Twitch is solely focused around live streaming. While YouTube is more, like just absorb content and go kind of a mm -hmm. thing and it's not very like personal community building yeah yeah, yeah. so for me i, I, I kind of hope twitch but so, so real question have you ever considered that twitch's very very close-knit very personal relationship with their community is toxic in any way like is it too much have we been conditioned oh, there's definitely yeah. they they cap i'm sorry i didn't mean to jump in front of you but there is they have intentionally made decisions at twitch to capitalize on the parasocial relationships that streamers have and mm -hmm. streamers themselves can either wholly embrace that which some do for profit reasons or they can eschew it and just kind of go their own way mm -hmm. i kind of feel like to be successful, and when I mean successful, I mean where you're, you have your audience is growing, and you're turning your profits are generally tr trending upwards. That would be a considered success it, to for many people on Twitch, right? Mm -hmm. Um, in order to do that, you've got to be able to straddle both of those things. You've got to be willing to understand that. Okay, I've got to find a way that's going to encourage people to. Uh, do that, but I don't want to do it in a way that's also going to turn people off because mm -hmm. you're not, you know, um, and, but that's just part of why it's a business. If you're, if you're just streaming for fun, stream for fun. Mm -hmm. If you're streaming because you're trying to, you know, do it more than a hobby, those are things you got to think about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's plain mm -hmm. and simple. You know, and I think there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Um, and I find it better like i don't i used to i don't anymore and i'm not calling out anyone that does this i'm not saying i just want to tell you the reason why i switched i used to keep a running like tally of like what my sub count was i did this for like a long time and i would like have like sub goals and all that sort of stuff i got away from doing that where it wouldn't show what my active sub count was nobody else needs to fucking know that that's what i feel like now like nobody needs to know what my sub count is and what i will do now is i just have a separate new sub goal a new sub is either someone that you know you know is either gifted a sub or had let their sub lapse and then resubscribed it would count uh right or somebody that was brand new that subscribed right mm -hmm. and then every time i get 50 i give out a free shirt or hat from the merch store and i have found that by doing that i have been able to maintain a higher sub count without even having it on there since I made the switch. Because mm -hmm. I think that the way you frame that, it works better because you're not worried about what your overall number is. You're just encouraging new people to join in. Mm -hmm. sure. I think that by framing it in that way, it makes a difference in how people view you, the streamer. Again, just my own personal opinion. I'm not saying if you have your sub, like if you do a subathon or any of that's wrong. It's just, this is the way I kind of take when it comes to that you know i i try to give value to people that want to drop some bits or do some stuff like that but i don't ever i never outright ask for it unless i'm memeing hard you know like <laughs> you know I, i'm not i'm not going to say hey you got a sub here to enjoy the channel i've never said that and i never will say that and i joke. yeah but when not, you do say it, it as a joke it will work oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll have like there'll there'll be a troll who comes in, right? Who says something out of pocket right out of the fucking gate, and then they'll get banned. I'll be like, dude, you know what? If you would have been a fucking sub, we could have allowed you to stay here. And then somebody <laughs> will give that person a sub, even though they're fucking banned. <laughs> I fucking love that shit. Oh man. Um hey, I got a tinkle. Can you guys carry the podcast for the next couple yeah. minutes? So I will talk yeah. about a band story. Talk about oh. Band. Oh. I won't say names. But I wanna hear it. Oh, too bad. Get the fuck out. Fuck. <laughs> Watch it back later. Mm, okay, no, I had... Answer. This one's not that... Okay, hang on. I have an email, and I'll remove the names. 
but I think I deleted it, but, um, hang on. Because I banned him, so, like, he must have pulled my email up from my Twitter mm -hmm. or whatever. Or, he actually, emailed? it's on my it's on my Twitch, too, so, like, my email for my Twitch. Uh -huh. And so I got this email from this guy who I banned, like, I, I had him, like, basically shadow banned for a while, but it's, like, every time he came in, he was just saying stupid shit, like, oh, you're not even listening to me, da 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 So uh -huh. I was like, whatever. And then he came back yesterday, and then I was just like, ah... Uh, if if you have anyone in your stream that makes you feel uncomfortable when they come into your stream, just ban them out. It's not mm -hmm. worth keeping them around. Just fucking do it. I know you know that. Um, yeah, but I yeah. was just saying that more to the audience. Okay, trash. Let me find this email. Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? Yes, we are ready. The subject line of the email is just an apology. <laughs> okay? Okay, this is going to be good. All right. <laughs> Hi. Recently, oh wait, I'll wait for knackers. Hi. Okay, you you made it back you in made time. It just in time. I, Let's go. I'm gonna read you. I'm taking out any names or anything, but I want to read you an email I got yesterday from a guy I banned from my channel because they're just fucking asshole, basically. Okay? I'm gonna get up and get a drink, but I'll still be able to hear you. Yeah, because you got them wireless. All right. Uh, the title line is uh, just an apology. Hi. Recently, I made a fool of myself, and I am sorry about that. However, I wanted to explain some things. For example, how I have never, ever meant any harm to anyone. But apparently, I must have done so in spite of what I think of myself. As I said before, I don't remember what I said in the chat the day when this happened. I just remember that I was against everyone in any thought that day for some reason. I might have said something to you, or I might have offended someone in the chat. But I never meant to. If I did. I have never been absolutely shut out from somewhere without an explanation before. If I fuck up, I always want to do what is right and face my errors. And I want to talk <laughs> to the people... I want to talk to the people that I have wronged to at least get some closure, you know? If I did some unforgivable shit, then please let me know. Yes, I am pleading to you that you have mercy on me. In the situation where I have been the asshole. That is true. But I want you to know that if I ever do anything wrong. I always want to sort that shit out by talking about it with whoever it was that I said some shit to. Or at least I would like to address it. And to be fair, if I know myself, the other party would also want to hear what I have to say. If oh. I know myself. No matter how drunk I am. I love the start of that sentence. I still have a point in what I'm saying, and I highly doubt that I would be capable of actually hurting someone. Yeah, let that sink in. Sounds that's like this what is happening now, before. That's what I am now afraid that I have done, because you are completely shutting me out, and no one has ever done that to me before, dot, dot, dot. I understand that you would not do that unless I really said something that is truly terrible. And I just can't imagine myself being a person who does that. Your channel in the chat has always been a safe place for me to come to. And where to shoot shit with you in the chat. But to think that I have myself said something or made it unsafe. Or not fun to be at for someone else, well, it makes me sick. And if that is the case... I am truly sorry. I am writing this to you because your channel has become a blessing to me the last year or so. Lots of shit has happened in my life. I can always come and count on you for your content. At least, that's how I felt before. So once more, I am truly sorry. And even if you will not let me back to the chat ever, could you at least show me some mercy here and let me know that what I said... Because I was too drunk to actually remember. In any case... <laughs> I wish you the best, and I love that what you do. You are a hero to many of us. I really wish I could have been more aware of that before. All the best, da ba da, and Dude. viewer. All the best is the fucking most passive aggressive <laughs> way that you can end an email. No, sir, not the best. You were at your worst. Uh, but yes, uh, Professor that Pine, was... thank you very much for that read through. I'm sorry, I I had a re it was so. It was so funny to hear, to literally in real time, watch them read. 
I know I'm not capable of doing this, but if I did, <laughs> <laughs> like they just kept like beating the same thing. It's insane. Yeah. But I'm I, not I capable of doing this because that's why I turned off unban requests off, even though I'm sure it would probably bring some comedy. I don't want to <laughs> like if I ban you or a mod bans you, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. I don't need a fucking email. I don't need a mod request. I don't need a request. That's it. Just fucking go about your life. Um, fuck your I, life. I share that. <laughs> fuck your life. Uh, I share that with y'all because that's not the first one I've got. Like I've gotten several of those over like where yeah. I'll ban someone and then they'll send me an email. And like beg me to unban them, and I just I'll just fucking block the email and ghost them is what I do because I'm like I don't got time for this shit. I don't got time for it. I mean, is that bad? Am I callous? No. 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 no okay. You're not. So, I obviously channel sizes are much different. I do not, and obviously I'm a white male on the platform, so I get the least amount of harassment out of anybody. Um, I've. I've don't ban people too often in Twitch chat. However, I block a shit ton of idiots on, on TikTok. I don't know what it is. Anytime you have something that gets any bit of traction, it just goes into the like largest percentage of idiots pool. We're like That's the first pool that your TikTok video goes into. And then you just get all these morons that come out of the yeah. woodwork to say the stupidest shit. And so... I'm very, very easy to just see one really, really stupid comment. If I, if you have a trolley or, or – no, I'm sorry, not trolley. A mean or insulting comment right off the bat, I look at your profile and it's private and you've got like an anime avatar. I'm just blocking yeah. you. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't want your shit anywhere near my shit, all right? Yours stinks. Mine's less stinky. Don't want it. Uh, so, But sometimes I feel bad. I'm like, okay, am I creating my own echo chamber – by just blocking people. But I'm like, no, because there's no... There's, there's no, no shame. It's a difference between a dissenting opinion and a fucking idiot. Yes. Yeah. Okay? Yes. There is no shame in blocking a someone that doesn't even have a valid opinion. They're just an idiot. They're an asshole. There's no shame in that. And yep. I get what you're saying about the echo chamber, mm -hmm. but it's like when the whole thing, recent news events, and some politicians got interrupted at a press conference, and I thought to myself... You don't have to apologize for interrupting a fucking liar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. You don't have to apologize for interrupting. If they're lying and you know they're lying, yeah, you can interrupt them. It's okay. That's yeah. when their ability to, like, your normal civil discourse is now out the window. And by yep. them saying some fucking off-the-cuff bullshit in the comment section of your TikTok, you don't need to waste your time, energy, and mental health dealing with that kind of fucking shit. So 100%, mm -hmm. I agree with doing that. I agree. Yeah, it's about boundaries, ultimately. Like, mm -hmm. learning to yeah. set those boundaries for yourself, for your mental health, and just for the general content and the, the what you don't want on your content kind of thing. Yep. What I've also learned, um, you know, I, I used to, you know, I'm a, a firm believer in free speech, right? I like that the, the internet is open and that anybody can say anything. Uh, however, there is some, like, you should be able to have some control over your your own stuff. And while you deleting comments and blocking people can create that echo chamber and can prevent the court of public opinion from really, uh, you know, running train on you. Sometimes when I get really stupid or insulting comments, I've now instead of responding with either either something smart ass or something trolly, I just delete the comment. And that's mm -hmm. that gives me as much dopamine as responding with something witty or like just trying to be funny while also be trying to be mean. Mm. I wanna, I wanna address your comment on free speech. When you say you can say anything online, you mean that's not like within the normal limits of like yes of human. Not like you can you can just go and say online. I I just want to. Put that in the caveat just so you you're not misunderstood. That's sure. All. Yeah. When you sure. say mean, that's what that's what you mean. I do not believe in big tech or government being able to remove anything or silence anything for any reason. Wait. What? So you don't think that 
if again again a... within reason right like i don't within want reason yes i don't want people i'm not like 100 free speech nothing should be, le be deleted that's not what i'm saying at all mm -hmm. yeah 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 okay. okay that's what i that's what i just needed to clarify yep. yeah one that's thing it. that i've noticed also with comments like if you have that one negative comment sometimes you'll get people that are just like oh let me just also poke the bear and add into that wave and so when you remove that one like negative comment that could possibly domino into additional dummies just saying mm -hmm. some dumb shit. It, mm -hmm. you just remove the problem which is great let me give you a great example of that on twitch so it was kind of a like ongoing joke for a while but it just got to the point where it was annoying because there were some people overdoing it like i would if i ever take a break on stream people would be like poop break whatever it even got to the point where i would like ha i even got the emote where i'm not pooping actually uh which i would spam <laughs> i'll put it in chat that's like the origin of this I'm like nope i'm not pooping nope there's no poop happening anywho i actually ended up banning the word poop from my fucking twitch chat because I got so poop, the word poop and the word pooping because it got to the, like what you're saying. People see someone saying it and then everybody else, it just turns into this, oh, let's just fucking poke. I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, it's not funny. It was funny like a while back or maybe once every blue moon. It's not funny. It's not. not every time. Shut the fuck. I'm not shitting. I'm going to get a beer. I'm going to piss. I'm going to go tuck my son in. You stupid fucks! So I banned the word poop. And then, for like the next couple days, anyone that tried to like skirt saying pooping with something clever when I was coming back from break, I just fucking time them out for 10 minutes. Damn! I threw them in the piss corner. I say, hey, go enjoy your time in the piss corner for 10 minutes. Soak up the piss. I'll see you when you come back, bitch. So, did you... Okay, but here's the thing. Did you start that meme... By like, or were the words, have you just always been accused of taking shits on stream? I was, it was something that they were always accusing me of because I would always, I've always been a believer of taking regular breaks. Mm -hmm. I do it for multiple reasons. One, because I've got some back issues, but two, because it's important to get up and move around every hour or so. So mm -hmm. I do that. And so people started saying oh ah, he's got to go take a shit uh, and it just kind of turned into a meme and it was fine but it just got it literally got to the point where so many people were doing it and then even new people to, to the channel were like mm. starting to get in on i'm like who the fuck are you you know <laughs> like you're telling me I'm, I'm like who the fuck are you i can't even pronounce your username and you're telling me i'm taking a shit this ends today it was like one of those things that just was like all right i'm done I'm you're, you're done. over it that yeah. was it yeah <laughs> that was it so i banned the word poop and pooping from my stream and yeah, here, here we are. I banned the word Roblox <laughs> for that same exact reason, and then here I am in 2022 playing Roblox often. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, oh. dude, what a what a banned story! And I know Gray, you've got so many, and I know that you still have trolls from your YouTube days that are just absolutely relentless. So, like, honestly, I'm just, like. I just I, I feel like it's at a point where it's just like they genuinely don't even realize what they're doing and they're just like mm -hmm. annoying about it but yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I'm I'm very glad that uh you that hasn't been a reason that you've stopped or like it hasn't been a reason that you have kind of swayed um because like that would that would make me so fucking sad if it was something like that just prevented you from being able to do the things that you you wanted to do um mm -hmm. i i hate that harassment is kind of just one of those things where it's like yeah if you're going to be a content creator just get ready to get shit on like it sucks that that is the norm um i don't think that will ever go away i don't see how that we can uh how we can curb it happens that to it, me and i know and it happens to you and i know we're like the least targeted you know, right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, me and Knackers, I know you just by yeah. being a woman increase your target by about 100%. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't know how that can change um, because, you know, if it, it doesn't even it's not even about being on the Internet, right? It's not just creating content in general. 
if you are creative or you putting if you put yourself out there or you put something creative out there, people are going to comment always gonna on criticize. it. Always going to criticize. Always. That's that's the kind of the part where I'm like, okay, that's that's never going to change. Um, but you know, it is what it is. It's it's not just with creating content. Anytime you create something, there's going to be there's going to be a peanut gallery there. Yeah. Well, you put it on the internet, so obviously you want somebody to say something. No, not necessarily. No, just, I just shut the to fuck share up. It. Do your thing, Jimmy. Um, okay, getting into uh, a little bit more of the Twitch news. And by the way, I totally forgot to announce. I, I see, Jimmy. I see your empty fucking Kool-Aid glass. Go fill it up there, Bert Kreischer. Um, if anybody has any questions that they want to ask any one of the guests here, um, exclamation point Q, followed by your question in chat, we'll, we'll have the bot grab it. Um, but yeah, there's been some, uh, actually quite a few Twitch updates recently, with the most recent one being that the friends, uh, being able to add friends on Twitch has been removed. And that would happen within like the past seven or so days. Was that anything that you used in, in any capacity? Okay. Never. I was going to ask, <laughs> did you use it? Because I know I didn't really use it. I had a ton of requests, but I never, I like, I don't even know where to look. Like, what, no. I, what, what does it do? I I just auto declined almost every friend request because like people people would find the channel either through like a raid or a host or through recommend or whatever, and then they would add me as a friend. I'm like, and I'm sorry, but that's not how this works <laughs> at yeah. all. Um, I did enjoy being able to see what my friends were watching. Cause like mm -hmm. if I went to my following list and nothing was there and I went to the front page and there was nothing there that, you know, piqued my interest, I could go and see who my friends were watching and be like, is there anything that I would be interested? So it was kind of just like another way to be able to see what people were up to or seeing what people were interested in. Outside mm -hmm. of that, I did not mess with it really at all. Yeah. Yeah, and it's I, weird that like whispers are still around, so it's like their messaging platform is still baked in a little bit. But mm -hmm. you know, I don't have any way. I wish there was a way that I could see. Well, actually, I don't know if I want this. Uh, see whispers anywhere else because like when I'm live streaming and I have my dashboard up or I have OBS up and I get a whisper, I don't see it. It's not until mm -hmm. like the next time that I open Twitch and I see that there's a notification in the top right, and I'm like, oh. I yeah. have a whisper, and then it's like two two weeks later or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, like freaking forever after. I know that the, with the whispers, it does say, like, if the person has it public, like, what they're watching, which I know, like, I've seen and used for, like, friends if I whisper with them, but I don't really use it as much. It's more of a, I'll just use, like, third-party things like Discord or something if I need to message a friend. But it would be really nice if they implemented something in the dashboard that would have whispers so you can see anything and everything and be able to toggle it on or off because i know that some people get bombarded with whispers from people annoying or harassing them so i think there's like probably a matter of balance with that i actually wonder like if we were to take a if we were to take a poll right now of like mm. streamers and, and viewers everywhere how many viewers or people that are new to twitch in the past couple of years actually know that whispers exist like that you can actually privately message other people on the platform oh dude probably not many no i, I would like, say I less than half know, i don't even know like where the friends option was because i would get all these like requests and i'm like i don't even see where someone can even add me on my profile like where the hell are they finding this button because i can't find it for other people <laughs> like what <laughs> <laughs> like, where is it jimmy added every conversation Oh, he was listening. Say that, that was the dumbest fucking system ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I hated the friend system. And whispers, yeah, I agree. You need a way to notify. You need a way to... When you're streaming, it's too difficult to, like, send shit. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, I just... I ignore all that shit now. I'm glad that they removed the system. Is it is it gone now completely or no? Yep, friends is gone. Okay. Yeah. So, good. I mean, it's it was stupid. Not as uh, not as dumb as Twitch buying Curse and then trying to implement that into their own desktop app as well. Um, I don't know how many, again, don't know how many people in chat actually knew that there was a Twitch desktop app. I don't know if the app is still live, um, but the whole communication platform of it. Like, it was, it was a Discord clone that was baked into Twitch as an application. Uh, you could use it to watch streams. You could use it to uh, actually communicate with other streamers. It was like having another Discord server baked mm -hmm. in and that 
uh, that has now came and went. That was that was around for a couple of years. I think the Twitch curse acquisition was back in like twenty. 17 or 2018 it was a couple years after discord had already been out um and i I don't know if it's if it's a thing anymore but yeah just one of those things that kind of came no traction whatsoever and then it and then it went it was probably they saw that discord was something and they're like hey let's figure out how we can implement it so we don't lose people from our website from you know just keep everybody together in one place kind of a thing but again like Another another feature, instead of like trying to improve what Twitch is good at with the live streaming, they now are just like putting it, trying to implement other pieces. It's like Instagram or it's like uh, Facebook and TikTok getting into stories. It's like, just don't. It's not it's not what people are looking for on your platform. Uh, but what do we know? We're, we're just fucking measly platform people. We don't know what's going on. We've only all been on this platform for over seven years. <laughs> There's actually probably quite a bit of Twitch executives that we know more about the platform than they do because of how long that we've been around. That would surprise me. Oh, my God. Can you imagine just like... There's over two decades of streaming me. experience between just the three of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wild? We know what people want. That's crazy. We know shit. Yeah. <laughs> we know it all. <laughs> As far as other Twitch news, um, this change, I'm curious to hear what both of you have to say about it. So in order for a host to show up on somebody's channel that you are hosting, you have to have three or more viewers. So any hosts mm -hmm. that are smaller than three will not trigger Twitch alerts. Um, it might still Good. work. However, they, they don't show alerts. Um, Good. And also, have any of you realized that auto hosting isn't, really a thing anymore like that's yeah. it's still yeah. a thing where you can it do it but it's not what it used to be yeah yeah it doesn't show up on the carousel unless you kind of like manually do it a lot of the time you have to manually mm -hmm. post but honestly though i think that's better because that's really the intention they're trying to shift it to where people raid instead of host and i think that that's fine because that's what you should be doing period I... you should raid you shouldn't host if you're if you're live on stream Twitch, don't host the channel, raid the channel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't. Yeah. I feel like right? a lot of it could have been something with uh, the like hate raids and everything of the sort, too. Like that was yeah. a factor as well. I don't I don't. I'm indifferent about it, but I'm kind of like, hey, it's fine. It's good, I guess. <laughs> Larger streamers will host and not raid because they don't want to send their viewers to another channel. They want to keep the viewers on their channel. Um, yeah. That's, that's which wild is, to me. I, that, to me, says a lot more about the streamer yep. yeah. than it does. I mean, more than, because that tells me that they feel ownership over their viewers, mm -hmm. which is not the way to ever feel about it. They're mm -hmm. not, no one is my viewer. I have viewers. I have viewers that like to view other content creators. I'm not the only Twitch streamer they like to watch. Mm -hmm. They're not mine. I have no ownership over them, just like they have no ownership over me. Right. You know? And I don't, exactly. I, I, I hate this mentality of people that think, like, oh, well, those are my viewers. Well, you wouldn't have that if you didn't have me. And they, I, I'm like, what? No, dude, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. So, yeah, that's the way I kind of, my, my thoughts on it. Yeah, I agree. Completely. Definitely a fan of it. Um, you know, I actually had, uh, I don't want to say, I don't think it's a controversial opinion, but um, I had a discussion on TikTok with a couple other creators about how zero to one viewer hosts are meaningless. Like, and it's not, I'm not trying to be fucking mean. I'm not trying to tell you that you shouldn't share your communities with other people. But in the grand scheme of things, there are other things that you could be doing as a supporter of somebody's community that would be better off than you doing a host. Um, again, when it's zero. Well, if zero to one person host, if you're a, not a streamer, it literally means nothing. Yes. Because no one's yeah. going to your channel. Right. That's yeah. the shit I should, you, I think I believe. I think if you're, if you host someone and you're a streamer, that's regular. It's not valueless, but if you are if you are a viewer that doesn't stream regularly and you're like, I'll just host the stream because I want to get a shout out. No, man, don't do that shit. So what is the value of a one viewer host? Of a streamer? 
for a streamer if oh, you're for hosting. A streamer? There's people that go and click on people or search stuff when people are offline or they, they're looking somebody up and then mm -hmm. they might see something of interest of who they're hosting. I've had people find my channel that way from people hosting my channel that weren't live. Mm -hmm. Just like I've heard of I've heard of people finding other groups like, oh, yeah, you were hosting. Objection me. hearsay. It is, but uh, it, it's anecdotal. I'm just telling you. But is the value great? No, it's not great value, which is why you don't need to direct any attention to it right. when someone does it. Mm -hmm. I turned off all notifications. In fact, I even turned it off on my stream dashboard. If it says hosts, if it's a host that's under three, I, like, I don't even see that you hosted me. Like if you're, I don't even know. I think it's less about the alert. What, being what a is factor. that? What is that fucking look, you bitch? So I, you just, you just said that those types of hosts from streamers have value, and then I asked you to explain it, and then you said I don't even fucking look at hosts that are below three viewers. I don't even fucking look at it. <laughs> no, I'm, well, listen. I said it doesn't have great value. Is what I'm saying. It's not enough value that you okay. need to acknowledge. It's like passing value. It's like could something happen for me hosting? If someone checked out my page right now, absolutely. Yeah. And it's happened. But you're right. It doesn't have great value. I, I guess okay. I guess I'm, I'm trying to get into more of the the gray area. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Jesus Christ. Shut up. <laughs> God dang. Sorry, Gray. You, right. you were saying something. I cut you uh, off. No, I was just going to say, I think it's less about the, the alerts. And I think it's more about just like, hey, you know, I'm not streaming. So here's someone that I... I'm watching or that I think is good to watch and if you come to my channel you see I'm not live and you see a friend of mine or someone that I really admire like that's someone to check out kind yeah, of a thing and I think exactly. that's where the value lays or like lies with uh streamers hosting channels okay that's fair yeah next uh gambling on twitch so we don't really really need to dive into this but I just want to make sure that like my thoughts are in line with the rest of my echo chamber about this. Um, so there, there is a massive, massive conversation going on right now because gambling with online slots has anywhere from 200 to 300,000 viewers at any given time on Twitch. Um, mm -hmm. cool. Massive. So like, I, I can't even fathom how many daily viewers or how much watch time is actually being devoted to, to gambling on Twitch. A lot of the conversations are as follows. Gambling should not belong on Twitch because we have a lot of impressionable youngins who are consuming this content, and it is, uh, it's a bad influence. We have the other side saying, it is not my job to police what your kids watch. If I want to do what I want to do on my channel, that's up to me, and you need to do a better job of, uh, of controlling what your kids watch, which even though I hate kids and that's like the the thing that I would lean towards. It's actually not the side that I'm on. How do you guys feel about gambling on Twitch on whether or not it should be allowed or whether it should be gate kept by age? Um, so age gated, rather, I should say, is you have to be you have to be able to confirm your age somehow uh, to be able to watch the content. It's it's really it's hard to get into the conversation of like that doesn't belong on Twitch. Because that that argument has been used to suppress people of color and and women streamers on this platform, um, you know, especially with like sex work. With I'm totally fine with. I don't care that it's on Twitch. It's not my content. It's not what I consume. Whatever. Do what you're gonna do. How do you guys stand on that right now? And Gray, I'm gonna put you on the spot first since you're the special guest. I kind of feel like it's it can be a bit of both. I think like age gating definitely makes sense because i mean legally you're not allowed to gamble until you're a certain age so i think that's important but i'm sure we all know that we can just put in a different uh you know birthday i remember back in my world of warcraft days putting in a different year <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> like, so i could play with the cool kids back in the day um, so <laughs> i think that twitch uh, needs to come up with some way type of age verification system and mm. that these types of streams are locked behind it that's yeah. what i think that would be, that would be that, the best way. I think if you're a mature audience stream, and which I am, and I know it would also mean loss in viewership for me, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you're streaming under that tag because you have adult content, they should have a way for being able to age verify for the users. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I, I, I think the reason why Twitch hasn't done it is because there's no law that's forcing them to do it. You know, um, I think that I think we're gonna get there at some point. I really do. I think that we are headed toward that way where there's going we're gonna have some type of verification tool to use to not for all over the internet, but be able to access certain sites. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be some type of verification tool where certain things are gonna be locked based off of age. I really do think that that's coming. I do. Mm -hmm. so, but I think I think it's good because I think it protects it protects people from not being taken in content that they just shouldn't watch. Now, if they're smart enough, are they going to be able to work their way around and find it elsewhere? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it it just like just like signing, you know, laws don't prevent all crimes from happening. Putting those those barriers in place are going to help stop a lot of the problems that come with. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think should be done, in my yeah. opinion. How do you feel about the argument, it's not my job to police what your kids are watching? Like, even though it is a bad influence to show gambling, because, like, what's, what is it's the upside the of gambling? Job. It's not the streamer's job, but it is the platform's job. I do agree. It's not that streamer's job. If they want to spend their time gambling... Is it morally fucking super gray? Yes, considering the audience. But is it their problem? No, it's actually not. It, it's it's the problem of the platform. It's their problem. So in that regard, I do agree. Do I think it's a shitty fucking way of thinking of it? Yes. But are they technically correct? Also, yes. So. Yeah, I agree with that. Completely. Do you think that both of you have, like, is there anything that you wouldn't do because you're afraid of how it would look or how it would affect your viewers? Or do you have the stance of my content, my body, do whatever the fuck I want. If you don't like it, don't watch. No, I definitely do. I, I like I know that I've always had younger viewers, uh, especially a on the YouTube side. So I've always been very mindful of like, hey, you know, I am like what I do can very easily influence someone else. So I need to be mindful of that. But I do see the beauty and like, ah, it's my life. I'm going to do what I want. Screw it all. Like, I get that. But at the same time, like if I am creating content and someone like if I didn't have my channel marked for mature audiences, I would absolutely be mindful of what it is that I'm doing and how I am portraying things and what I'm like doing so that I am a decent role model. Not to say that I think that I want to be a role model or that I am a role model, but if anyone does look to me as a role model, I want to make sure that I am presenting in the most like morally ethical, great way that I can so that I don't influence them to do something that I don't like stand behind or I don't think that they should stand behind kind of thing. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you know me, I think I have taken the approach. I used to stream with the webcam. I got away from that because of when I was of my job that I'm no longer doing as a teacher. <laughs> so um that was one of the main reasons um but at the end of the day i think it really just comes down to there are certain things i guess i wouldn't do like i wouldn't i would never take like a sponsorship for some game that i wouldn't want to play like i could never see myself doing that any game sponsorship i've ever taken for like where dev pays me to play their game for a couple hours i've never chosen a game that i didn't think looked like a game i would enjoy you know, and I've been offered way more than I've actually played. Yeah. Uh, because I, I think that's stupid. Why would I tell, why would I say, I'm just going to take this $150 or 200 bucks or whatever it is they're offering and say, yeah, I'll play this game for two hours, even though I know ahead of time, I'm going to hate it. Why would I do that? I wouldn't ever do that. I wouldn't ever intention just for the money. Right. You know, I would only, um, I guess in that regard, that's what I kind of think of. Uh, I've gotten better over the years with, you know, trying to, to what I say and do. Um, but it's, it, it is a little easier on me now that the things are masked behind a, a, a cartoon beer. Sure. And it, and it 
It saves me, because, like, you guys don't, if, like, if I'm sloppy drunk, you just see the stupid fucking beer smiling back at you. You have no idea. Just, I mean, you might be able to tell from my voice, but you don't really, you don't really know how bad I am, because you got Jimbles, the beer, staring back at you, not Jimmy the person. So, that has given me some, some leeway, you know, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can be shirtless in my underwear. Don't fucking matter. Yep. You know? Pretty good. <laughs> I think I think that's kind of where the the waters get muddy is because you have these streamers that are getting the money that they're gambling with from the platform that they're gambling on, and then yeah. you yeah, also don't funny. know if the odds are being changed for mm -hmm. them on stream to show that they're winning more than they are. And I've, I've never seen yeah. anything to confirm that. Uh, but seeing as how we've already experienced that in this community with certain websites skewing the winnings for streamers that were broadcasting the gambling, it's a totally different story. Um, yes. And that's kind of where that's kind of where it it, you know, I. I don't want to say that they aren't allowed to gamble on stream because like, I'm not going to walk into a casino and be like, you shouldn't do it. You're losing money. Why would you even be here? Right? Like it's not my fucking problem. It's not my business. Um, but I do worry, you know, there isn't like a pane of glass to the casino where middle schoolers are walking by and seeing people have the time of their life gambling because the house is giving them better odds at winning. Right. It's just like, it's, it's two different scenarios. Um, so it, it's hard to know where I stand. I know that I hate gambling. I hate casinos. I've never understood any of it. Uh, I don't gamble any money, although, like, I do stupid things with my money, too, that, you know, people would say, like, well, like, you buy headphones and mice, and I go and gamble. I'm like, okay, well, that's fair, because I have, I have 17 pairs of headphones, so I can't really, uh, can't really combat you with that one. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm sad to see that it has such a, a massive place on Twitch right now, even after the CSGO skins and all the gambling that went on, like that shit's already happened in this community once. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just worried, I'm worried about kids. I, I, you know, I'm somebody who's like, Hey, don't do drugs, but there are some really cool ones out there. Right? Like I'm, I'm right in the middle there. I know how fucking terrible drugs are for people, but at the same time, some are cool depending on which ones. So that's kind of where I stand on it. I think there needs to be like I know obviously with a lot of certain sponsorships and things of the sort you'll have NDAs that you're not allowed to talk about certain aspects and things but I think that there should be some kind of line where it's like okay yes I won't talk about these things and say all these things but I do need and feel like morally that I need to say this is being altered in my favor don't gamble your money like don't do this because I the only reason I'm doing this is because a I enjoy the game B I got lots of money to do this and freaking happy for them but and then just saying like hey I'm being paid additionally or things are changing and I'm just showing you all the really fun like yay when it happens but like realistically yeah. it doesn't actually happen this way you know like having that very like transparency but I know that businesses don't want that because right that's now. removing what they're trying to kind of like sway. And I hate marketing so much for that reason. But yeah, it's, transparency is so important, but it's so hard to be able to like legally do depending on what NDAs you may sign as, as a creator. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you both for, for sharing your, your thoughts on that. I appreciate it. Um, there are just a couple a couple other uh, Twitch news, and then we're going to get into the Q&A here. Um, two different types of badges have been added to Twitch. One is the, uh, you can say whether, you can define whether you're watching the stream muted or only watching with chat, like you have the the video disabled. So if you're right. if you're looking in chat at some point and you see like a little speaker with an X through it, or I think it's a I think it's an I. Uh, I don't know. I, I forgot to link I it in the script. I saw that the other day, I'll and I was you. like, "What I'll, is I'll show that? It. I'll demonstrate in chat. Yeah, right now. yeah. Hey, there you go. So yeah, I think that one means that you're watching without video. Yep, with which audio is only weird. And this is without audio. I didn't yeah. know that that was a thing. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's new. That's how disconnected I am. <laughs> yeah, that one happened. It's kind of funny. I've seen some streamers get trolled because everyone switches it to, like, no audio and be like, can't hear you, streamer. Yeah. I can't hear you. Um, yeah, that's funny. Gray, if you want to stay in, if you want to stay slightly in the loop with a complete lack of drama, 
follow a guy named Zach Bussey, or Busey it might be, on, on Twitter. <laughs> he just okay. reports Twitch news uh, most of the time uh, absent of bias, and you'll just kind of get the skinny on on new things that are coming down the pipeline. Um, he's a fantastic resource. That's actually where I get almost all of my uh, all of my news Done. from. Um, so yeah, I hope that all of you will change to listening to the podcast without audio. So you're just looking <laughs> at us talking with nothing else going on. We're already getting trolled in chat, that, man. That makes me know that you guys are having a great time. <laughs> um, and then the other one, which is fucking awesome and should have been here so long ago. <gasps> Is artist badges. Um, you're able yes. to actually mark in chat uh, with blood, uh, you know, with a badge <laughs> saying, hey, these are the artists that have made shit for my channel. Not only that, but you can also assign them to the emotes so that when people mm -hmm. hover over the emotes, they can see which artist made that emote. One of Love the coolest that. fucking additions. Um, you know, it's it was always so weird to me that artists almost single-handedly drove the twitch emote culture on this fucking platform and they've been just like ignored for so long <laughs> like yeah. they it's so fucking sad but really really awesome um you know i i've already marked mine but you know my artists aren't necessarily you, can you imagine if every artist was active in every fucking chat that they were a part of i have very few artists that are active in, i have i have a couple that are kind of well one is my mod uh but he he hasn't done a lot of emotes for me, um, but he's done a lot of other stuff for me. So he has done a couple. But my other artists, my main emo artists, I mean, they come by every now and then, but not that often. They're they're doing art. Yeah, <laughs> but it is they're working. It is cool to recognize them, and I like being able to tag. Hey, this person made this emote. Yep. Yeah, it is cool. I, I like really love I like that. that's a cool feature that I was not expecting, and I'm glad that they implemented it. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. It's a great way for the artist to be able to get business, too, because if you see a design that you really love, you're like, oh, wait, I really like your style. And then you you can just find them immediately instead yep. of being yeah. like, hey, streamer, who made this? Who and made the this streamer emo? Doing this well, and that, that. click that name. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Figure it out for your so fucking good. self. Do I have to do everything for you, chat? Jesus Christ. Wait, the emo, you sack of shit. You sounded like me. You sound like me today. Like, Jesus, what game are you playing? Jesus Christ, does anyone read? Look at the fucking title. If the, there needs ah! there needs to be uh there needs to be like a bot that anytime somebody says like what game question mark in a single chat message, it just automatically posts what you're fucking playing in chat. Yes, please. That has to be that has to be a troll. Be a thing. I, I don't believe that anybody is asking what game you're playing truthfully. Like, oh man, I, I have no idea what this guy is playing right now. Unless yeah. you haven't chosen what the game is in the Twitch dashboard. Yeah. Yeah. Totes, my goats. Motherfuck. <laughs> Motherfuck. All right. Uh, that is it for pretty much the, the main talking point. So we're going to get into the QA. Oh, real quick. I just want to talk about this because, like, I, I brought this up on my stream, but because you guys are both creators and. Jimmy's on TikTok, right? You're on TikTok, right? I'm on TikTok, but I haven't really done much with it. But I'm working on it. Okay, oh. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be putting out a lot of TikToks this summer. Good. We love I have TikToks. a plan. I actually met with a TikTok uh, social media manager and paid for a consultation, and she gave me all. She did like a review of my shit. She did all kind. Of, she gave me all these great resources to use to help me like set a plan for creating, and she was really helpful. So awesome. But I, I also knew I didn't really want to dive into that so much until after I came back from vacation, since I'm leaving to go to the UK on Friday. So I'm gonna wait. Awesome. Pip pip cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Pines up on TikTok is. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna first kind of go over the situation that transpired. Um, and then I'm going to talk about like this weird opportunity that presented itself that isn't something that I've experienced uh, being, a, being a creator yet. So um, being a TikTok creator, I get reached out to a lot, people just trying to get me to use their products and make content about it. Um, and so one of the first ones that I've worked with is a company called Fantic, and they made an electric screwdriver because it was something that I'm very much interested in. I wanted one, and I wanted to review it. So went through that whole thing. The deal was you make a video, we'll send you the product. Very, very common transaction when it comes to using products. Um, you know, you can make it more of a pro 
promotional video where you're just, you know, and that's kind of what I did with, with one of the first videos. It was just promoting the product. And then you have more of like a review video where you're actually going over parts of it. You get into the discussion of like, okay, is you getting a free product technically compensation? Can they really believe what you're saying because you're being compensated for the video? Blah, 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 blah all that. So the first agreement was for one video for sending the product for free. So after that happened, um, I made a second video because it took me too long to make the first video just as like a thank you. After the videos were done, they came back and said, hey, these videos were great. We want to use them ourselves and we also want to promote them as ads. And of course, like if you get in this conversation, remember what the first agreement was. The first agreement was a product for one video that you posted on your profile. You're the one getting the traffic. You're the one getting the algorithm. That's it. So if they ever come back and say, hey, we really fucking love what you did, remember your first agreement and, and stick to that because your value as an influencer, as a creator is vast. Don't forget that. So I came back and said, hey, that's awesome. Glad you loved it. This isn't a, wasn't our original agreement. Can we come up with a, a different way of compensation? And I'm happy to lend you guys these videos so that you can post them on your social media. So we came up with a price. I was able to neg negotiate an additional product and additional payment, um, which wasn't a part of the first agreement. So cool. The whole point of this conversation is the other thing they said was, we want you to turn on ad capabilities with your post so that we can promote it. And I'm like, didn't fucking know that this was a thing. So I did a little bit of mm -hmm. uh, digging on it. There's a feature within TikTok to where you can go to the video and turn on, it's kind of like an ads by proxy, to where you turn it on, you set a day, uh, a day amount, 15, 30, 60 days, and then it generates a code. You send that code to the company that's doing the promoting. They pay to boost your post as an advertisement. So you'll actually get like the little sponsor tag on the post and then it boosts I usually it. immediately, as soon as I see advertisement, I usually go, Whoop. Right, because that <laughs> that's they, the hard part. Do they have yeah. that also on Instagram? Because I know that that's a constant thing and like a very common thing with people that Most I follow. Most likely. They, yeah, yeah, I, I was going to say. I would assume so. Um, so then you have like, okay, you have the conversation of, well, I made the video and it's on my post, but they want to boost it. But again, like that's that's an additional thing. Even though you're going to be one getting the exposure, which is everybody's favorite thing to get uh, paid by, um, that you're going to be getting the traffic and, and they're paying to boost it. They're the ones still getting the recognition for for the product, right? You're you're creating mm. a, an additional service for them. So again, something like I never experienced before because like I've done more business deals in the past year. Than I have like my entire time on Twitch because I just I wasn't dabbling in any of that stuff at all. So I just thought that was super interesting. Like oh, that's so weird that instead of you making a video and sending it to them and then them posting it and making an advertisement, they're just taking your original post and then boosting that, and turning it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So crazy, yeah. something I never thought of before, and and here we are. I love that, honestly. <laughs> Now I'm excited yeah, cool. to see what kind of things you're gonna be whipping up this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. <laughs> spending four hours on a fucking thirty second TikTok is ridiculous. It's it's a trap. It came out. So Thank good, you. Though. Thank you. I, I was really <laughs> proud of it. I had a really great time recording it, and I loved how it came out. But Jesus, like you never know what's gonna come out the other end. But like again, what yep. what came out was. They wanted to good. use it on their on their shit and wanted to promote it. More free products, awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, in interesting. It's just uh, kind of gives Your you creativity has really fucking oh my shown God. on TikTok. Don't don't like you have become me. a master of no? I'm telling you, you the become a master of, of the short form content. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The edited short form content. Mm -hmm. You are a master class. You've got a very creative mind. You're really good at it. It's like that platform was made for you. I'm an influencer now. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, get into the questions, and then we'll close out this bitch. By the way, thank you, thank you for the compliments. It's it's been a been a fun ride so far. Speaking of rides, shut up and read the questions, you bitch. <laughs> First question from Joe Tashi. Uh, he says, Estjin, do you think Amazon could integrate Luna with Twitch? The fuck is Luna? I think Luna is there. Oh, like it's fucking crypto. 
Is it? It's crypto. Yes. They just launched Luna 2.0. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that. Um, that's the yeah. world I am so out of. No, yeah. no, they shouldn't do fucking NFTs or crypto with Twitch. Next question. What Next if question. you could get an extra 10 grand a year just for having NFTs involved in your in your content? You're asking a question that is there. You have no basis. 50 in reality. G's. What if a fucking supermodel pulled up next to you and said, I really want to suck your dick, knackers. Oh, <laughs> I'll pay you a million dollars. Just don't tell weenie. What would you do? That's about the, the same chance of that happening as what you just said. Yeah. Okay. Regardless so, of whether she pays, question. you're still getting a blowjob. <laughs> this is true. A blowjob's worth a million dollars. I don't know how many people have penises out there, but definitely worth a million dollars. Or yeah. fake a million dollars. You know, do you wanna I know this is totally irrelevant, but you wanna hear a funny fucking story? About a blowjob? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not gonna get too descript. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not even like about a blowjob necessarily. But so I've been teaching till two days ago, right? Twelve years of my life, and I had a student uh, when we were doing. We were reviewing for the AP, not the AP exam. It was one of my non-AP students. It was for the state test, and I was going over some like reviews for different presidents, and she raised her hand while I was going over some like 20th century presidents. And she goes, yo, you know what, Mr. Jimbles? You know what? I didn't realize that LBJ standed for Lyndon Baines Johnson. I always thought that meant long blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I fucking died, God. man. I fucking died right there in class. <laughs> I was like, I got to go. I, oh, I got to go. Dismissed. I got him. Jimmy's got to go get an LBJ. Oh. <laughs> I need an LBJ. I need an LBJ. Jesus All right. Christ. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just thought oh, I could Oh, well. Tell you guys about Kids these motherfucking days. Oh, my God. I know. So Joe you know. said he's he was referring to Amazon's cloud gaming. So you completely derailed that conversation without even talking about the right thing, Jimmy. Well. I'm sorry. Well, it sounded like I thought he was talking about fucking NFTs. So whatever. All right. Well, close enough. So, um, yeah. So Amazon Luna, their cloud gaming service. I, I don't have any first experience with any cloud gaming. Um, but what I Me what I do know is that there is still so much improvement to be made of gaming in my own fucking house with the hardware that's located in my house. So, do I have a lot of faith in cloud gaming right now? Not necessarily. Uh, however, again, I'm playing a lot of first-person shooters, things that are in high res, high refresh rate. You know, I need real-time interaction with my video games. Maybe you could play Plants vs. Zombies on your fucking Google Stadia. I don't know. I just I haven't given much time to cloud gaming whatsoever. So it's it's really hard. For, I can't really answer this question, unfortunately. The tech guy can't answer the tech question. I'm sorry. But crypto, bring it on. I just don't care. <laughs> if I'm at home, I'm gaming, and I have the shit for gaming. If I'm out... I got a switch. I got my phone and I'm good. I don't need I don't need to do anything beyond that. I, I know that it, the technology is improving. Yep. But I it, my the lifestyle that I lead I lead, it doesn't really require me to do any cloud gaming. So it doesn't really affect me at all. You ever get that feeling that we're like the old people that are like, eh, this wow. new shit. Every day. we're not about every it. fucking day. <laughs> Ah, uh, who gives a shit about new shit? Let's talk about old shit. <laughs> yeah, that's every day. As long as here, okay. So in regards to that question, um, I, I made a, a TikTok yesterday asking for some guidance on where I wanted to go with my home storage solution as far as buying some new servers or some new NASs. And a lot of the times when you're talking about tech, new technology, you have things that have GUIs graphical user interfaces. So when you think of like a graphical user interface, you think of pictures and things you can click on, a mouse, a keyboard, and all that shit. <laughs> God damn it, Jimmy. There are There is still like a large population of tech people that believe that everything should continue to be done via command line. So like when you want to copy a folder, you open up command prompt, and then you navigate to the directory, and then you write a command to copy, and then you write a command to go over to the directory where you want to paste, and then you paste it. There are there are technicians that will make fun of you for doing for using a graphical user interface 
instead of just like typing things out manually in command prompt. And that's kind of like where I draw the fucking line. Like, you want to yell at clouds? Fine. GUIs are good! We want things in graphical sense. I want to be able to use my mouse and keyboard. So fuck off. Um, but anyway, sorry for that mini rant. Next question from Platypus Bill. I almost said Platypus Bill, uh, but it's Platypus. Uh, I saw unique chat mode the other day. When did that become an option? I've never seen that ever. I have no idea what they're talking it. about. I only know of it becoming a thing. Well, or of it as a thing because of hate raids. Like that was something that you type in your chat and it initiates and like lets Twitch know kind of a thing. But I don't really know that much about it, to be honest. I just know you get a hate raid, you type slash unique chat. And then it's like, oh, oh we know that something bad's going on here. Kind of a thing. I don't know anything about this. So I wonder if that's just you're flipping on something with you're just flipping on a mode where certain things aren't allowed in chat. This is actually yeah, the first that I've heard about it. it. Um, unique chat. I, where is this mode? What's it like to be a white guy on the Twitches? This unique chat command. Di I did. This is what it's like. I don't know what. <laughs> Look, people getting yeah. harassed? What you the know, hell? You need to add something where it, it helps prevent the spam uh, so that people can't just, like, spam a bunch of harassing or just Who's ridiculous getting things. harassed? Unique chat. This command <laughs> disallows users from posting non-unique messages to the channel. It will check for a minimum of nine characters that are not simple oh, Unicode characters. So like, it's kind of like sense. a spam filter. Yeah, basically. it's a spam filter. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Never knew that cool. existed. Again. Mm -hmm. I didn't either. White dude on the White platform. On yeah, we yeah. just, we don't, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, it's fucking true. Um, very, very yeah. unfortunate. No. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Next question from Wizard CM. What's one game you wish you had better streaming integration to have viewers join easily? I wish that fucking for the retro, I can never get, I have tried three times to get fucking, uh, what's it called? Uh, that one, uh, that one. I know what you're talking about. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's where streamers can they, people can do things with the streamer crowd control. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have not been able to get crowd control to work. Oh, okay. I I've been I've tried so many times and it's like it just can't work. I haven't tried um, to set it up yet. I know of I it. I wish it was. But... I, I don't know. I'm I'm probably overlooking something, but I've I've tried to set it up and it's it's not very intuitive. So. Yeah, I would say that. Um, mm. Fall Guys. Again, what I was mentioning before. Being no. able to get into a fucking Fall Guys match with 60 people from chat or like 100 people if you're doing a mega round. That, absolutely. Um, Genuinely, mm -hmm. any multiplayer game, just have a, one simple thing to be like, hey, this is the room code. Enter it in mm -hmm. so I don't mm -hmm. have to add hundreds of people that yep. I don't know who they are. I ended up purging my whole friends list because of that because I was like, I, I don't even know where my real friends are. Yeah. Where are my homies from like World of Warcraft days? Like I need to know almost where, where everybody is. Back so, yeah, in so. my um, Rocket League days, wanting to do 4v4s with chat. Like you had to add everybody as a friend just to get them in. Being able to say, hey, we're doing a lobby. Here's the code. You get right in, and then you're able to able to play the game. I would have loved that. Um, I'm sure when it comes to the BRs, you know, what better way than to get to be able to play a bunch of games with a bunch of different people from chat of getting a new group of three people in every round or every other round? That would have been awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of what other games would would be really really great um, with with chat, not chat interaction, but chat and real fortune. Any, if they made like a like modern Wheel of Fortune game where chat could like crowdsource what answers, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd be badass. Um, so yeah, so I guess that would like. Here's the thing: is like, who does that? Who does that responsibility fall on? Does it does it fall on Twitch in order to be able? I think to, it's more on the dev. Right, it's on the yeah. game devs to make devs. that possible. Um, which is yeah. like, what if you put a hundred thousand dollars worth of development into that, and then your game dies on Twitch the day after it's developed? So I, be so sad. I get it. I fucking get it. Uh, like, okay. I think that's something. Sorry. No, I feel ahead. like that's something that like along with like accessibility, it would be so great if they just had a simple like just just a room code. Just add it in yep. to the thing. Mm -hmm. Make it really simple and easy. But I'm sure that there's probably something with like servers and connections and stuff that I don't oh, know yeah. anything about. But yeah. yeah. 
Next question, also from Wizard, second to last. What cool feature have you recently discovered in the app's tools you use while streaming? Hmm. New feature? Yeah, like a new feature that's been added. Um, you know, I, I can say from by proxy, there's this new bot um, called Adam, Adam TV by a streamer named McGregles. He is a, a drummer. He's a musician from over the pond, and he teamed up with a couple other people to make a bot called Adam that is incredibly powerful. Jimmy, you might actually be interested in this. His bot allows you to enable and disable channel point redemptions based on the scene that you're on. So, like, if you're in your starting soon screen, you can have all of your channel redemption points disabled. And then when you go to gaming, you can have a portion of your channel points. Um, so, act like, a couple of weeks ago, I had him on the show to kind of talk about Atom. So, I think it's A-I-T-U-M, I believe, Atom TV on mm -hmm. Twitter. Let me actually find it. Um, they, they're they very, very new, but they've also been making some really awesome Hang strides. On, my wife's calling me. I'm listening. Uh-oh. Go do your thing. <laughs> Um, Adam, A I T U M. I'm gonna post it in, uh, in chat right now. Uh, where are you, chat? E yoink, yoink, yoink. Chat um, okay. I believe it is. I think it's free to try, but the premium version is only like five dollars a month. So, like, if you wanted to do everything through Adam, you could. Um, but if you're just looking for that functionality, um, really, really cool. I know that like you, Gray, and and Middle Age Stream, who who have channel point redemptions are very much a part of their stream, but you want to be able to like tune it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. you know, th there's so many other capabilities of the bot that I can't even begin to go into, but uh, really, really awesome shit that they're doing right now. I will follow them. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm going to look into that. It's very out. interesting. Thank you for mentioning it. Yeah. So this is, um, this is going to seem like a, like a plug. Uh, because I'm affiliated with the company, I've been paid by the company to create content for them. Um, a butt plug? Yeah! You know, there was, a, <laughs> there was actually a stream recently that Mark Rebier did where he literally did a sponsored stream for sex toys. This man had a suction cup flashlight sticking on the wall for the entire fucking stream. It was so goddamn funny. And like... That's the kind of content I want to produce. I want to be able to have my full sexual humor and be able to take sponsors like that with no shame whatsoever. That's my fucking dream. Just be deep throating fucking fleshlights on the screen, man. Hell yeah. The fleshlights do the deep throating. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, the Beacon Mix Create has been something that has been pretty life-changing for me and my content. The two biggest things... Uh, which, if you if you're kind of been streaming for not that long of a time, this might not matter to you. Submixing, submixing allows you to adjust the volume of things in your headphones individually by application or by software, aside from the things that your chat hears. So, like when when I'm playing the intro song to the podcast, I can have that completely muted, but it's playing for you guys at a totally different level. I can adjust the volume of Gray and Jimmy from what I can hear on my headphones to what you guys hear in the stream. As somebody who the, who's new to that, who's never dealt with submixing and live streaming, that is a feature that has really helped me elevate my audio um, for my live streaming setup. And they just recently added um, VOD track. So something that used to be only possible within OBS you can now do with the Beacon Mix Create or the Beacon Mic that comes with the mixing software. So you can play music on stream, have it appear live, but have it not appear in any of your live content or in your, I'm sorry, in your VOD content or any of the pre-recorded content. Uh, do with that wow. as you will. You know, especially if you're somebody who takes <clears throat> a lot of your streams after the fact, you want to be able to edit that. Um, it makes it a lot easier to kind of make content with after the fact. Um, so those are mm. those are two features that I've implemented into my uh, into my setup recently. And you guys know like how extensive my analog audio setup was pre 2022. Oh, yeah. Like all of my audio setup exists in these like three square feet right now. Um, and there's obvious uh, limitations to that as well. Um, but those are just two things that have really uh, that I've really really enjoyed lately. That's awesome. Nice. I like. Final question. Very much. From Fahad, do you think Twitch should handle? How do you think Twitch should handle the follow bot hate raid situation? 
Um, so we got into this conversation a little bit before where Twitch has released a new uh, restriction to where if you host a channel with less than three viewers, it does not show up at all on, on the stream, no matter what. Uh, no matter what alerting service that you're using, it's just not going to show up. So that was one of the obvious ways that they combat that. Um, I definitely think that there's more that could be done to to combat the targeted harassment that doesn't involve hate raids. Um, I mean, there's obvious, like, there's sometimes you get follows or hosts from channels that are blatantly saying, har- like, uh, derogatory terms in the username. And you're mm-hmm. like, how the fuck is that not screened? Like whatsoever. Yeah. Um, they definitely could do something in regards to making it harder to sign up for account. Like it shouldn't just be as easy. Just like, oh, I'm just like I'm a new person. I'm signing up, brand new account. Uh, if you're a new, if you're a new Twitch account, you should be able to chat for a week. I, I don't think that there's a reason that you should be able to chat within the first week. You you can wait, right? Um, that's at least how I see it. Well, you can set those in your channels. Like, right. uh, I have it set in my <laughs> channels. Like, if it's a channel that's under less than a week old, like a uh, or a or a account, you're not allowed to talk on my channel. Yep. Yep. And that has helped curtail so much fucking shit. That oh my one God, yeah. setting. Like, yep. if they just try and make a new account and just come troll you, and the fact that they gotta wait a week, they're gonna they're gonna get over it. Yep. Yeah, they're going to get bored and move on. You can change on. it to longer, you know, mm-hmm. but a week usually is plenty, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I think Twitch is doing a good job uh, of addressing things. I know that it's it's not easy to do with as massive of a platform it is and the programming, the coding, and to get it all to work. I know that a lot of people, I, I, has Twitch, was were they a late to address this solution? Sure. But did they get some good solutions to make things better because it's way better now than it was a year ago yes yep. i think they they're on the right track and I, I i'm i'm ready to criticize twitch when the criticism is due but the new measures they put in last year for stopping that i think it has stopped the majority of them not all but the majority yeah i feel like yeah. it's probably like i know that i have a lot of settings in place to prevent mm-hmm. that and I also have a lot of like, like I've, I've been follow botted before and I have like a certain thing where I'll just do immediately mark whenever it happens. And then I use Commander Root, which is such an amazing resource as a streamer to use to be able to remove followers at like masses and stuff of the sort. Um, and but I, I'm sure that there are things that like I know I don't experience because i just have so many measures in place that some new streamers might not know of so having something that would be like informative to someone who's streaming or just like a hey let's prevent like like um just kind of some type of like a theme or like a not a theme but like a oh my god what's the word profile or some sort yeah that's the word that's it right there no (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> something that you can just like toggle on to be like hey i want to just be a little more like preventing certain types of like raids or follow bots yeah. and things like that but ultimately there there are the tools and the resources and i agree that that twitch has definitely taken some time to respond back about everything but they've mm-hmm. done they yes. they do have some things that are helpful yeah so. So, um, in closing, um, Wizard brought up something great, you know, great uh, thing that happens, right? What if you're a new streamer and a family member realizes you're streaming and they want to, you know, they want to hop on, right? So, my first answer is this. I am willing to give that up to give marginalized people and women and people of color a better time on the platform. Like, if, if, if we were to weigh those two things against each other, I would weigh in favor of them because of how terrible of a time they have. But I also understand yeah. that, like, the, they're creating a, barry, a barrier to entry, right? So I get that. So idea that I just thought of right off the bat. What if when you... Cr- but, it's, but it's all selectable. Like, you as the streamer get to choose... Yeah. what that barrier to entry is right but how many people so I, know that that exists <laughs> right so like instead of instead I, of stopping I mean, it at in the your store, security settings listen i had my one of my audio things muted and they turned off all like publishing vods and i didn't realize all i had to do is just yeah. toggle it on and off it took me like weeks to figure that out yep 
So I just like I would rather have something at the source cut it rather than put it on the streamers. But regardless, my other idea is what if when you start a brand new account, the first account that you chat in is the only one that you can chat in for the week. So you pick when you start your account, you pick one channel that you can chat in for that first week. And then after that, it's, it's fine. Or maybe it's, you know, it's two weeks or maybe you get three channels for the first week. So like, OK, if you're going to go harass somebody. You, you get your one, and then after that, you're fucking done until, but by that point, they've probably moved on. So that's, like, one of my ideas. But, again, like, I would rather just see, you know, I, I would rather just see it capped at the beginning rather than have to have to deal with it after yeah. the fact. Yeah. Great. Like, listen, Mom, Great. you got to wait a while to talk in my chat. You don't need to come and talk immediately. Mom, okay? shut up! Yeah. <laughs> my mom got logged out of her Twitch account that I made for her, and she's like, I'm banned from Twitch or something. I can't get in there. It's so funny. <laughs> the fucking anyway. Jersey accent. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's from New York. Too. Oh, God, it's even worse. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so what we're going to do, Jimmy, I'm going to re-raid you with all of your viewers that you bought, uh, brought over from the beginning of the show. Are you going live oh! right now? You said I bought all my viewers. You're right. Oh, shit. Was... At, only at onlyviewers.com. Freudian slip. If you guys need to buy viewers on twitch.tv. Sorry about that. Only viewers. <laughs> I was gonna say only fans. <laughs> only feet slash snackers. Um, so we're gonna close out this show in a normal fashion. Gray, the browser needs to stay open for like five minutes to finish uploading all the audio and video. But if Jimmy, you need to leave so that you can start your camera in OBS so that you can start your stream. Just don't close. Perfect. I don't know if you can Can I give you I'm not gonna close. Okay. I'm just gonna give you both some love. Okay. Well how about okay. how about this? Let's just, we're going to end, we're going to act like we're going to end the show and then I'll stop recording and then Gray, you can book it and then Jimmy, you can book it and I'll just wait until you go live and I'll, I'll raid you. Perfect. Okay, sweet. Perfect. What up, everybody? Welcome to the Crocs and Out Pockets podcast. We're fucking ending, so fuck off. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of the podcast number 179, Pirate Gray, Middle Age Stream. Uh, this podcast will most likely be back in two weeks. Um, uh, it's always a, a fantastic pleasure. I'll be in London. We'll be here. Oh, shit. That's. I told you. No, you didn't. You didn't tell. I'll this is the London. first time you've brought this up. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> fucking got oh, you bitch oh my god oh god anyways okay uh great please tell everybody where we can find you on the internet if you have any special events that are coming up um and then we'll, we'll go on from there I go by pirate gray on twitch and youtube pirate grayson g-r-a-y-s-o-n on twitter instagram and tiki talk uh, my name is Jimbles. Well, at least I'm actually Jimmy. My beer name is Jimbles. It's my beer persona because I'm a beer avatar streamer. You can find me on Middle Age Stream right now. I'm stealing Knacker's content and I'm actually rebroadcasting the podcast while Knacker's nods his head. Okay. You're welcome, Middle Age Stream um, chat for the content. Yes, yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play some more Subnautica tonight because I'm addicted and I'm jobless. So. So subscribe to Middle Age Stream. I, I better see 10 gifted subs as soon as he goes live, okay? Or else. Or he, he might be live right now. Hi, everybody. My name is Snackers. You guys can find me on the Switch channel most likely twice a week, sometimes once a week. I'm making ch I'm making content on TikTok and on Twitter and on Instagram and, and YouTube. That's where I spend the majority of my time. But I still love live streaming and I still love you. I am technically on vacation. I have not edited a single piece of content uh, on all of the days that I've been off. Um, and I'm going to do that for the next two days as well. So I'm like, I've been posting on TikTok randomly, but I haven't been editing anything. Okay. It's been posting. So I'm on a little bit of a break and then we'll be, uh, we'll be back at it later in the week. So again, thank you everybody for hanging out for the podcast. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your holiday. If you have tomorrow off, awesome. If you don't suck a fuck bitch. And, uh, we just hope you have a great day no matter what. So this podcast is ending. We love you. Goodbye. Bye.